Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So as some of you may know, I do hair loss consultations and this is non-medical where I give people personal advice on what I would do in a situation like theirs and try to give them some tools and you know some general questions they can ask their doctors whether it be dermatologists or even hair transplant surgeons. So recently one of my customers also subscribers went to get a scalp evaluation done. This report was a trichoscopy. So I asked them if they were fine with me sharing this with you guys and they agreed. So let's have a look at what a professional trichoscopy report looks like. The trichoscopy report presented here is a professional assessment of a client's scalp and hair health, particularly focusing on the signs of androgenetic alopecia commonly referred to as male or female pattern baldness. The images at the top of the report show close-up views of the client's hair follicles from different areas of the scalp. The statistics are broken down into three regions of the scalp, frontal, temporal, and occipital areas. They provide detailed analysis of hair density, shaft thickness, and the distribution of hair follicular units. The frontal area has the highest hair density at 182 hairs per centimeter squared. So this might be good news, right? We have high density here. However, even though we have high density, which is simply just the number of hair follicle units that are actively producing hair in a given area, the question of the quality and caliber of those hairs comes into play because the report does make it clear that these particular areas have some sort of thinning going on. So the process of androgenetic alopecia and its progressive thinning has begun, but it's good news though that many of the hairs are still there, are still present, so hopefully with further treatment, these hairs can be maintained, if not recovered to some extent. But we have to remember, the longer these hair follicles are in these sort of miniaturized states, it's going to be really hard to try to get them to switch back to a more terminal kind of growth. So again, in the frontal area, when you take into account the hair shafts itself, they're generally thick, but there is a small percentage of thin hairs that come in at 30 micrometers. The thick hairs are 70 micrometers. But yeah, going back to those thinner hairs, those, you know, thin width hairs, that's at 30 micrometers. So this is a typical sign of miniaturization. The temporal and occipital regions show slightly lower densities and different hair shaft thickness, with the occipital area showing the thickest and most numerous hairs, which is typical since androgenetic alopecia typically affects the top and the front of the scalp more so than the occipital area. The cumulative hair thickness provides a measure of the total hair volume in each area, and the number of follicular units per square centimeter gives us an idea of how many groupings of hairs there are. The derived Sinclair scale is a grading system for hair loss with lower numbers indicating less severe hair loss. So this client has a Sinclair score of 2, which suggests mild, not so bad hair loss. So it's pretty maintained. It's pretty, it's pretty well. The report mentions the presence of single, double, and triple or larger follicular units, which are the groupings of those hairs that emerge from the scalp. So I think I mentioned this in older videos, but when looking at the hair follicle unit, these organs can sometimes produce one up to five hairs per follicular unit. We see that in androgenetic alopecia, there's often a reduction in the proportion of multiple hair units. So if somebody typically has like three, you know, hairs coming out of a hair follicle, over time, it can potentially downregulate to one, maybe two hairs, right? This is the gradual diffuse thinning process or just in general miniaturization. You start to see more of the scalp, more of the, uh, the skin, but this can manifest itself in about three ways that I can think of off the top of my head. So gradually, that's the partial miniaturization that I mentioned before of the hair follicle units, or the other way would be a gradual diffuse thinning over the scalp. 
Now, the diffuse thinning is often referred to as female pattern hair loss, but I don't think we should focus too much on the name here because men can manifest those classical female pattern hair loss signs and women can also manifest those classical male pattern hair loss signs. Where we have the temples receding for the male pattern hair loss and for the female pattern hair loss, again, it's that sort of diffuse thinning over the scalp. So I can talk about this for days, but I would encourage you guys to read this paper titled quote divergent progression pathways in male androgenetic alopecia and female pattern hair loss trichoscopy perspectives unquote and this study was published in the journal of cosmetic dermatology on october 9th 2023 conducted by dr tomoko kamashima and colleagues in tokyo japan the study involved 126 male androgenetic alopecia subjects classified using the Hamilton Norwood classification, and 57 female, female pattern hair loss subjects using an adopted Sinclair scale. Now the researchers revealed the gender-specific progression pathways in these conditions with male androgenetic alopecia, typically starting with a reduction in the hair diameter due to follicular miniaturization, followed by a decrease in the number of hairs per follicular unit. Conversely, in female pattern hair loss, it often begins with a reduction in the number of hairs per follicular unit. So again, it's that sort of diffuse thinning process, which is indicative of hair follicle trilineage niche dysfunction, and then progresses to hair diameter reduction. So essentially what that means, the hormones, particularly DHT, significantly suppresses the number of hairs that can come out of these hair follicle units. The study underscores the importance of personalized treatment approaches and contributes to a deeper understanding of the gender-specific progression of hair loss. Kamashima and colleagues utilized quantitative trichospic factors to analyze hair loss patterns. These factors included hair density, hair diameter, and the number of hairs per follicular unit. So just what we went over in the subscribers report. So yeah, I'll leave that link in the description so you guys can go read more about this paper. But it's super interesting because we get to compare the classical male pattern baldness versus the female pattern baldness. And we can get a deeper understanding of what's actually happening to the hair follicles. And I can imagine that some people have a mixture of both, which is probably a nightmare. Uh, but yeah, that is just, you know, just something interesting to put in this video. But anyway, returning back to my subscriber's report, we continue to notice a presence of numerous vellus hairs in the frontal area, and yeah, that's just what it is. It's indicative of this place had significant DHT interaction. The hair follicles were very, very sensitive, so we can kind of get an understanding of where the hair loss actually is, where it would progress if we don't take immediate action with some sort of 5-alpha reductase inhibitor to try to slow it down. And from that, you know, we can kind of forecast sometimes, right? Seeing the pattern of miniaturization and seeing early signs of miniaturization, right? Because if we can see that a hair follicle or some, you know, aspects of hair follicles in a specific region are beginning to downregulate in terms of how many hair they produce, in terms of how many hairs come out of each follicle, right? You can kind of get an idea of how things are progressing. I think a really good sign for my subscriber here is that when they checked the occipital region, they found that this region was just thick. It had a decent density and it didn't seem to have any signs of, you know, major miniaturization. So that's great news for any sort of future hair transplant that this subscriber of mine may look into. Now, from what I remember, I'm pretty sure they're taking dutasteride. They mentioned to me before that they were having issues with topical minoxidil, and this was primarily because of that sort of high alcohol content of the typical Crickland brand topical minoxidil, as well as that propylene glycol sort of additive, which sometimes irritates people's scalps and actually can cause the hair shafts, you know, sometimes to dry out, drink, and that can really just, you know, kind of mess up with the quality of the hair itself. Now, from a video that I did about angles and lighting when it comes to, you know, just trying to get an understanding of how your hair looks, the second customer is actually the one that I'm talking about. So the second customer from that video 
is the one that I'm talking about here, where they showed additional pictures of their scalp, where, you know, up close with the scalp camera, you could see that some of the hairs themselves were breaking off at the shafts, and that could possibly be due to influences of DHT, yeah, so maybe the DHT dysregulated the hair follicle unit to the point where it produces these very weak hairs coming out of these hair follicles, or it can be a combination of something else, maybe, again, styling techniques, the use of minoxidil with a high alcohol content is somehow affecting the cuticles of these hair shafts, causing them to break, right? So, all in all, I just want to make this video just to show you guys what a trichoscopy could do for you, and how it possibly would be useful if you're trying to get a hair transplant done, right? So usually, this is the assessment they make just to see your strong points, your weak points, and to try to see the attempt to forecast, right, the progression of your hair loss. So this video seems longer than it really should be. I'm sorry for rambling on at some points, but I just wanted to just kind of get this information out there and present my subscribers results. I want to thank him so much for allowing me to do so. So that's pretty much it for this video. And if you got to the end of this video, comment in the comment section below. Camera. Yes, camera, the one you take a picture with, because it's very important to actually, you know, get a up close look at your scalp to just see the overall health of the scalp, right? But also the quality of the hair. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys on the next video. Peace.